Hello, Scouts. It's Mr. Kugler, and I thought I'd take a break uh, from actually cooking and talk a little bit about what you really need to get started Dutch oven cooking. And know that you don't need everything that's right here. I'm going to show you a couple different steps. But what I first want you to think about is where do you Dutch oven cook? Now, a lot of us do it in scouting. But our hope as leaders is that we're going to teach you skills that will be with you for a lifetime. Things that you'll find enjoyment uh, with long after you've passed your 18th or 21st birthday and moved on to adulthood, raising your own family, going out with your friends, camping and all. And Dutch oven cooking is one of those things that can be done in the backyard. That's where I am right now in the backyard. And I do a lot of cooking in the backyard. So what I wanted to do is talk about the very basic items that you would need and then a couple additional items that you would need. And this is great, especially if in this time you're working on advancement at home, you're looking for a gift for an upcoming birthday, or maybe you have some money that you've accumulated and you want to invest in your own gear. A cast iron Dutch oven is going to last you a lifetime taking care of properly. You'll be passing it on to future generations. So why don't I start there? This is a 12 inch regular Dutch oven. <coughs> it means that the volume on the inside is six quarts. The outside diameter at the top is 12 inches. This is probably, if you had to have one Dutch oven, and trust me, I got far more than one Dutch oven, but if I had to have one, this would be the size Dutch oven that I would have as a scouter, as a, as a if I was outfitting a patrol uh, to uh, go camping. The 12 inches, the diameter, regular depth, it's not all that deep, so although a deeper one would be great for doing a roast. This is perfect for baking. Plus, you could do a lot of great one-pot meals. The videos that I've been preparing and posting on the YouTube channel, I'm purposely using the 12-inch regular because I know that that is the size that many of you use. And I know it's the best size for what we as scouts and scouters do. Now, one of the other things that you're going to need is some type of a lid lifter. And a lid lifter serves two purposes. It lifts the lid, but it also will take the bale on the Dutch oven, this loop, and be able to lift it. So when you're adjusting the heat, trying to even out the heat, you're going to need this. Now this one is a Mar lid lifter. Mar was the one that for a long time had a patent on this style that grips down on the lid, lid lifter. There are other brands that you would recognize that are out there that have duplicated or come up with their own rendition of this style of lid lifter. What I love about it is <clears throat> you could pick this up and tip it and drop the ash off without worrying about dumping it inside of your Dutch oven. So it's a great tool to have to spin your lid, to lift up your lid, to pick up and spin the bale, a great tool to have. And quite honestly, is maybe five dollars more than the other type that is the old school just lift up the lid and move it but a lid lifter something to have tongs they don't have to be expensive these literally cost a dollar at a big box store i use them also for foil cooking that's why i have the round the top but it enables me if i'm cooking with charcoal to be able to place coals on top of my dutch oven or under the dutch oven so tongs are something that you're going to want to have. You also need to be safe. Some welding gloves. Now these are some inexpensive welding gloves. So I wouldn't want to be holding a hot, hot Dutch oven with these for any length of time. Um, but these literally came in a pack of three pairs for $10. So when you're out cooking and your buddy gets egg yolk all over it, it's not your $20 pair of welding gloves. But you certainly could get better welding gloves uh, that will suffice, but these leather welding gloves are a great tool to have to keep yourself safe. Another thing is when we lift up our Dutch oven lid and we go to put it down on the ground, if I just put it down on the grass and I'm stewing, I'm going to get all kinds of dirt and stuff stuck on my, on my Dutch oven. A lid stand like this will give me a place to rest my lid and not uh, either damage the grass but also not get my lid dirty. 
You may have seen a video that I did making uh, egg sandwiches uh, where I used the lid stand upside down so that, now you're going to go upside down on this, so that when the lid was upside down, the loop on the top of the, the Dutch oven lid stood out of the way. These are great. This one is collapsible, um, which is perfect for packing. Could also be a problem, though, with it flopping over on you. So this other type of lid stand, which is actually a little less expensive, no frills, does not break down or fold down, uh, but is equally light and is not going to fold up on you when you're getting ready to use it. So this is a great choice. If you're cooking with charcoal, you're going to need a chimney. There's a lot of chimneys out there. Um, I probably have at least nine different style uh, chimneys, ones that collapse, ones that are square, ones that are round. For a scout getting started, this is the Weber one. It holds plenty of coals, has a basket in the bottom, which helps hold the coals. You stuff newspaper in the bottom, put your charcoal in the top, Start the fire below, in 20 minutes you're going to have coals ready to go. What I like about this is it's got this handle on the top you can hold, and it's got a shielded plastic handle here instead of the metal radiating through, and it's constructed solidly. It's not going to fall apart. My biggest fear is that you end up with an inexpensive, from the big box store, $9 chimney. Think about all the mass of charcoal that's blazing in your chimney and then you're flipping it like this. The last thing I want to do is see you have an accident where that handle comes off and you've just coated yourself with burning hot coals. So under $20, spend a couple extra bucks, get yourself a good chimney. It's going to last an awful long time and it's going to be safe and you're not going to regret it. Some of the other very basic things you're going to need is a scrub brush. This is the one produced by Lodge. It's made to scrub out. And as you know, we don't use soap in our Dutch ovens. You could and rinse it well, but I don't. And I don't uh, promote using soap on it. But a scrub brush, scrubbing out the hot water is a great tool. Now, maybe you have some, you know, the, the, the scrub brush isn't doing it for you. Maybe you've got some baked on debris. A scraper, uh, either... This one's by Camp Chef, but you can also find them in kitchen gadget stores for a buck or two. It's a great, it's plastic. You can scrape out the, the uh, debris out of your Dutch oven, a great tool. Now I may upset some people, but I'll be honest with you. Over 40 Dutch ovens that I own, I use chainmail. I've not noticed a problem with my Dutch ovens. Do I use it all the time? No, only when I need it. But chainmail is a great tool. If you really have some stuff that neither the brush or the, the scraper could take off. But this is not something you run out and buy right away. This is a little bit down the road uh, to get. An inexpensive scrape, scraper and a scrub brush. Uh, I Actually, these are plastic. I prefer natural bristles. Um, are great to have to clean your Dutch oven. I also found, uh, this is for scrubbing out dairy tubs. It was actually, I think, less expensive than the name brand Dutch oven brush and it's a lot bigger and I think it's going to hold up a lot better and had choices of different bristles. This I got through Solo Brush out of Torrington, Connecticut. Uh, and this is a great tool. It's got a short enough handle, can get me in there. I think it was all of eight or nine dollars plus shipping. So what else do you need? Now if you're cooking in a campfire, you're good to go. You could cook on the ground and, 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 and you're ready. But many times we don't have the advantage of cooking in an existing fire pit. Uh, where we could cook on a, an already established place. We're practicing our leave no trace principles. We're maybe in a big field, maybe in our back lawn. Um, these pans that are, you'll find them sometimes in an auto parts store, it'll be uh, sold for changing oil. If you were to go to a uh, farm supply, they'll be called the hog feed pan, uh, but they're great. They're galvanized metal. You're not getting a lot of heat on them, so we don't have to worry about the galvanized. Uh, but this is a great tool to put up on some blocks of wood, uh, to put up on some bricks, elevate up, to be able to protect the surface below, collect the ash that you're generating, and also provide some wind protection. Now, this is great for a 12-inch, but this is a smaller hog feeding pan. 
that also works in my 12 inch Dutch oven fits in it and maybe it's easier to carry around and pack. It's also helpful for my, uh, to be able to have a place to put my chimney because the ash that's falling out of there, I want to be able to collect that as well. So those are some basic things if you're cooking in the backyard. Now you may be asking me, why do I have this piece of scaffolding stand here? Which I literally got at the big box store. I think I got it on sale, sale for around $40. You can watch for it. This thing collapsed, these legs fold underneath. It's got me, you can see it knee height, so it's at about 18 inches off the ground. This is a great height for operating and cooking. Um, with my pans on top of it, I'm not having an issue with ash going down or my Dutch oven sitting on it. But this is a great tool uh, to act as a Dutch oven table without dropping $150, $200, $300 on another type of Dutch oven table made for Dutch oven cooking. I'd offer to you that this also could be, depending on the brand and model of style of two burner small propane stove, and check with your manufacturer, may be a good choice for that too because it's nice and stable. If it could support, I think this is good for 225 or 250 pounds. Um, I should have checked that before, 225 pounds. Um, it can handle the weight of your Dutch oven or your camp stove, provided it's, it's stable, not gonna slide off and cook on. So here's some great tips to get you started, maybe for your patrol and things for your patrol leaders council to ask your troop to get for you, to outfit your patrols, or maybe you enjoy Dutch oven cooking and you wanna do this in your, in your own backyard. Start off easy, start with the things that you know you need right away, find out what works for you, and then build up your gear list as you need. So I hope this has been helpful. Hope you get an opportunity to get out there and cook and enjoy yourself and have a great time with your Dutch oven.